the alphabetical principle. Let's take a moment and think about what exactly is the alphabetical principle. When we think about the alphabetical principle, this has to do with the understanding that letters represent sounds and words, and that when we do the alphabetical principle, we're matching up, we're taking our knowledge of the alphabet, and we're matching up our knowledge, the, our ability to recognize and name letters in the alphabet, and we're matching them up with their most predictable sounds. So here, if we take the, the letter A, that graphene, okay, this, this letter here, it's going to be associated with its most predictable sound. For a beginner reader, that would be a short A, like in the word cat. And then eventually we're going to add on and we're going to say, you know what? A um, not only represents short A, the A sound in cat, but we also have another version, a long A in cake. When we're starting out, we always start with short vowels. And when we're teaching the alphabetical principle, we're helping that student uh, take the, the letters in the alphabet for the first time and match them up with their predictable sounds. And, and this is going to be essential for basic decoding and early, early decoding. So like, we'll we'll introduce them once they have this down, letter sound correspondence uh, of these letters with predictable sounds, they'll be able to decode de basic words like CBC words, like cat and hat and mat. All they need are a few letters that correspond with very predictable sounds to be able to start to do that basic letter sound correspondence and start to decode. So this is that foundational step, that, that sort of that in-between step that they need to start the decoding process. Now, we've already seen a bunch of activities that help foster this. Like, for example, we were looking earlier at like, uh, you know, writing without tears. And here, in a, this activity is in, in addition to practicing letter formation, vertical, horizontal lines, letter recognition, letter naming, you know, in addition to those things, it's also matching up this letter the L with its sound, the L sound in lizard. Do you see that, that visual support? So this, this curriculum is, is reinforcing letter recognition, letter naming, letter formation, and basic alphabetical principle of matching up a letter with a predictable sound. Yes? Okay, so, so th this is one way of building up the alphabet alphabetical principle. Let's look at another activity. Lots of different ways you can reinforce that letter sound correspondence. Here's one right here. Um, the child is, again, getting practice with letter naming and letter recognition. They're like, that's a lowercase p and uppercase p. That's the letter p, right? They're also practicing uh, forming the letter p. Now, this is drawing, so this would be a very young child, right? Nursery school um, or three, a three-year-old you know, very basic letter formation. They're not even worried about straight lines. This is just fill in, fill in the letter P, right? So this is mainly just practicing, you know, letter naming and letter re recognition with some basic letter formation stuff going on, right? But, but uh, even then, there's something else here. Do you notice that the P and the patch, P and patch for patch man, I guess? Here, I, I have a whole bunch of these on the wall here. Here's another one. This one right here, uh, the G, the G, we have, you know, the letter recognition, letter naming, and then G is for G, for gum. Is that right? So, so these activities here, well, well, they're, they're, there's an element that's fostering the alphabetical principle. So this is, this is being fostered all the time, okay? You're building up the alphabetical principle every time you associate a sound with, with a, a letter with a predictable sound. And eventually that child has that letter sound correspondence down, they can start to use that to decode words, basic words like CBC words, like cat. And then from there, they build out words and learn more phonics rules and start to really decode more complex words. Now with that in mind, let's do our first question. 